Hey guys and welcome to another video. Welcome to the Random Watch Dude channel and today uh, I just thought I'd do something a little bit different to the normal videos that I record where I'm facing the camera to just chit chat about uh, about watches and what's going on. I, I'm on the uh, it's just a beautiful summer's day guys and, and I'm on the kayak today uh, I've, I've just uh, just paddled from from where I live uh, just from the beach where I live across to this island called Motahi Island that I'm on now and uh, that that that's not the island I'd like to go to right now that that's uh, Rangitoto Island which is another seven or eight k's away from where I am and a very very busy uh, shipping channel today because it's a gorgeous day so I'm not going to attempt to get over there today there's just too many boats on the water but uh, I'm here on Motahi Island and this is a lovely uninhabited island it's I'm, I'm really just the great thing about kayaking guys is that you can in a kayak you can pretty much pull up anywhere you like you know so I'm in this tiny little bay here uh, it's very rocky it's not the sort of place that anybody would like to bring their little even their little speedboat into so uh, that's what I love about kayaking is you can just go anywhere you like and and pretty much just pull your kayak up onto the rocks and have the place to yourself so it's a lovely day guys and I wanted to uh, I wanted to talk about actually before I before I start talking about Rolex pricing and what have you I'll just show you my watch I I thought I'd just hang my uh, hang my watch up here I'm not wearing a Rolex today uh, out on the water no I even I wouldn't do that uh, no, I'm wearing a, an Amiga Seamaster, the Sacrificial Seamaster, should we call it? It's a bit unfair really, isn't it? But this is a, my Amiga Seamaster 2254.5. Uh, I've just put this on a NATO strap. Uh, actually, um, actually, from now on, guys, I'm just going to wear, when I'm out on my kayak, I'm just going to wear it on the NATO all the time. I've got a couple of rubber straps that I could put on this, but I just don't see the point. Um, and I actually think that this NATO is far more practical because essentially you've got two spring bars holding the holding the NATO in in place so if, even if one spring bar does happen to pop off or pop out you've still got a watch on your wrist uh, which you can't can't say the same about uh, the rubber strap unfortunately so yeah here I am uh, just just wanted to have a have a chat guys and just show you this uh, vista in the background whilst I'm chatting I wanted to chat about the the Rolex price increase because it took me a bit by surprise I mean I, I was absolutely expecting a price increase uh, on the 1st of January I thought it would be around 5% but it's turned out to be here in New Zealand guys it's turned out to be eight and a half percent which is significantly more than I expected I didn't think it would be anything like that um, now I've had some time to sort of absorb you know the the I guess the whys and wherefores and actually I took the first thing I did was I had a look at the watches that are on my wish list if you like you know the Rolex watches that I want to get uh, over the next 12 months and um, yeah so the Submariner uh, the 124060 uh, that's gone from what was that 14,900 New Zealand dollars that's gone up to 16,200 and I had my eye actually on the, um, the deep sea James Cameron which here in New Zealand was 23 and a half thousand uh, New Zealand dollars and that's which which was already you know getting on the choppy side I think for me uh, and it's now 25,600 it's gone up 2,000 New Zealand dollars and I, I must admit chaps I'm, I'm looking at that uh, I'm looking at that deep sea it, and even though I really like the James Cameron I'm thinking geez that's you know that's getting a bit high now that's not a $25,000 watch for me um, because it's more of a collection piece so look, um, question is why, you know, why have Rolex gone with such a significant price increase? Uh, I, I think, the, I think the, the key reason, guys, <clears throat> is purely because they can, you know, and I think we have to keep in mind that Rolex is a business. Um, and, and to be honest with you, you know, it's not like they're making PPE equipment, you know, and, and the whole world's going to suddenly be up in arms because they've put their prices up for PPE equipment. I mean, this is a, a luxury watch manufacturer. Um, that has basically looked at the market and said there's still this insatiable demand even post COVID there's an insatiable demand for our product and we'll keep putting the prices up until the market squeals and says no I mean that's the reality that's why they've done it uh, you know the other side of it is guys is you know they just made this significant uh, investment in, in Bukhara I can't even remember how much money they spent on buying the Bukhara uh, chain but uh, you know it's hundreds and hundreds of millions wasn't it and hey guess, guess what guys you know they've got to pay for that um, some people have said, oh, that, you know, why did they buy Bukhara? Uh, you know, what, why, why did Rolex suddenly decide to buy retail? Well, the reality is, and this is, you know, this is my take on it. The reason they bought Bukhara is because if they didn't, somebody else would. Uh, you know, that's the reality. So, you know, the Swatch Group would have bought it. And, um, and that would have absolutely drove, driven Rolex uh, bonkers, you know, knowing that uh, the, Bukhara, the Bukhara chain was owned by Swatch. So, you know, they bought Bukhara because, 
in some respects i think they probably had to because if they didn't somebody else would uh, and they've got to pay for that you know and this is they're running a business guys i mean i know they're a charitable trust and they probably don't pay any tax uh, which is another subject altogether that i won't get into but um you know they they've got to they've got to fund their acquisition they've also uh, by the way uh, got to fund their new their new factories let's go back and have a look at the seamaster let's go and, whilst we're talking about amiga uh, let's let's also have a look at this um, whilst i'm talking about the fact that they've got to uh, fund their new factories so you know they've just uh, invested a, a heck of a lot of money and announced to the you know to the crowd that they're building a couple of new i think it's three new factories actually over the next three or four years well guess who's going to pay for that yeah exactly guys the customer you know with their with their price increases and again you know I, I don't have an issue with that it's business you know that's that's just the way it works isn't it so you know make the customer pay for what they want um it, it does lead to another question by the way with these new factories and and the way the prices are going is does that mean that the amount of rolex models that are available in other words the, let's get to the availability question cut to the chase does this does this mean when rolex uh, open these new factories that there'll be more watches available i don't think there will i think they'll, they'll continue to make as many watches as they do at the moment they'll, they'll just be making them more efficiently like tudor do you know they'll, they'll just be making the same amount uh but it's going to cost them less money so their, their profit margin will increase i'm not saying they won't make any more um, but i think it'll be incremental because you've got to keep in mind that if if rolex suddenly started producing let's say 30 percent more watches and their and their product price has gone up let's say 30 percent over the last three or four years you're actually looking potentially then at a crash because what they'll have done is they'll have pushed the price up and the volume availability up and and that always 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 leads to a crash so you know rolex aren't uh, aren't silly enough to to let that happen to them um so no i i 100 uh, expect the uh, you know the new factories to just make them more efficient and that's good for them so so where does that leave us guys because with with this price increase now we're actually getting to a point where there's an awful lot of rolex models in the rolex catalog that that essentially you can almost go to a gray dealer um or or, or a private owner and, and buy the same watch used or or even if it's a gray dealer you might even be able to buy it brand new straight um, you know straight straight off the off the courier off the back of the courier van or, or go in and pick one up and walk out with it um, and not have to worry about this this wait list business and this expression of interest business and and so the question is now and I'm not going to get into a discussion about you know how the how the secondary market's going to react to this um, because I think that's another subject altogether but the I've been asked this in a couple of the comments recently actually is is it is it actually still worth you know with the prices being the way they are and your ability to be able to buy a rolex on, on the secondary market for getting getting towards the same price you know i could probably go and get a, a submariner now that somebody wants to flip um i could probably go and buy one tomorrow here in new zealand for just maybe two or three grand more um than retail and you know that's going to save me a lot of pain isn't it that's going to save me a lot of uh well, yeah, all, all the games that uh, that we all feel that we have to play to get what we want. Um, so I've got uh, I've got a few reasons, guys, where I think, depending on your circumstances, I think it's still worth hanging on. Uh, you know, with with your AD, with your Rolex AD, and hanging on for that that special prize that you want. Uh, and the first reason is buying buying a Rolex from the Rolex boutique or from any Rolex authorized dealer is your only cast iron solid guarantee that that watch is 100% legitimate. It's your only guarantee that's, that even the guy, even if it's a straight flip, you know, somebody went in and, and bought the watch and, um, and just traded it in with a, you know, with a secondhand trader, if you like, um, you, you still don't know where that watch went. You know, that watch may have been exchanged through the backs of four or five Audis, you know, over the last two or three months before it, you know, got in front of you and you don't really know what happened to that watch you don't really know the background um so look guys f for me you know if i'm going to drop 15 16 20 thousand uh, on a luxury watch i'm gonna i'm gonna wait i'm gonna buy it from the ad because you know I, I really don't want a watch with an unknown history and i'm certainly not going to rely on the previous owner to tell me that it's all legit um, because we know how that plays out so that's that's the key reason for me guys is you know it's your only cast iron guarantee of getting a hundred percent legitimate watch um, look, and, and the other thing is, you know, if, it, if it's a special occasion, guys, if you're buying this watch, especially if it's just your one and only ever Rolex, um, you know, it, it, it is kind of sentimental. You know, the whole the whole buying process of a Rolex, you know, you, once you've got it in your hands, it's almost like when you have children. 
and um, and mothers across the world will probably scorn me for saying this because it's them that has the baby not me but I know for a fact that you know after straight after a woman's had a baby she doesn't you know she says well that's it never again and I said that when my wife gave birth never again you know how can we possibly go through that whole horrible process of, of giving birth and epidurals and you know the hours and hours of labor and then of course as time goes by once you've got the child in your hand and as time goes by you start to go oh well actually this was you know this is really sweet and uh, you know it's worth the effort so uh, to get to my point guys I think you know when you do eventually get that call from your AD you know it is worth the effort you, you do you do pretty much 100% of the time go yep okay I am glad I waited I was very frustrated for a while but I am glad I waited and, uh, and you know that's that's the two key reasons for me really guys I mean forget secondary you know secondary value uh, for now don't if you if you're in the market for a Rolex that you actually want to keep and wear you know just my, my advice is to wait and I think what's going to happen and this is just my final point guys just on the whole on the whole episode my final point is that now that this has happened and now that even in my situation you know the the cost of a Submariner 124060 has gone from 14,900 to 16,200 and actually uh, in the last 12 months it's probably gone up about 14 15 percent every time the price goes up guys um, if you if you're in a situation where you can still afford the new price uh, you're probably in a better position than some people that are going to drop out of the bottom of the market so um, I think what Rolex are doing here uh, and I've had a I've had a long think about this I think what Rolex are doing here is they're actually the reason they're putting their prices up mainly is to just reduce the actual size of the market down to where they're trying to shrink the market down to a point where they can actually satisfy everybody so if in in a year or two's time you can still afford that Rolex at retail um, you'll get it and you'll probably get it within a month or two or three I don't know uh, but I think this is their intention guys I think they're trying to rather than trying to cater to the market and grow their volume to a point where they're satisfying everybody I actually think what they're trying to do is shrink the market to a point where they're just satisfying the people that can still afford it uh, and I know that sounds really harsh and a bit brutal and it's a very capitalist, um, uh, I guess, way to go about things. But that's that's the reality and that's how I feel about it. So, yeah, look, I'm, I'm, I'm upset, guys. I'm, I'm upset that, um, you know, that it's now going to cost me another eight and a half percent on top of what it did last week. Uh, but at the same time, I'm still in the game. And, um, you know, that's that's how much I want the product and how much I like the product. And, and if you're in that situation and you still really want it, just wait. That's uh, I, I just feel that if, you know the longer you wait, the closer you are to getting it. That's that's just my view on it. So uh, that's the end of this little ramble, guys. The end of this video. I'm going to head off now and um, go and find another little bay to go and have my lunch. And let me know what you think in the comments. And please do like and subscribe. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.